Former UFC champ Junior Dos Santos dislocated his shoulder throwing a punch tonight at Eagle FC, and in this video, we're going to explain what exactly happened. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and in this video, we're going to talk about an injury that in and of itself is pretty common in mixed martial arts, but the way in which Junior Dos Santos suffered a dislocated shoulder was pretty atypical. This is the aftermath of the punch that he threw when this occurred. And if we look at his right shoulder here, we'll see this pretty obvious deformity, sort of the step off in the contour around the outside of his shoulder. And the different bones that we're looking at here, basically from the front in this area, we're seeing the flattened head of the humerus, or basically the ball of the upper arm bone that's displaced or dislocated forward, meaning in front of Dos Santos's body, outside of the shoulder joint. The rest of these contours that we see here, this sharp little peak right there, is actually going to be the tip of the shoulder blade. And so we lose that nice, normal, rounded contour like we see on his left side, with this big gap or defect because of the ball of the shoulder being out of place. We're gonna look at our biodigital anatomy tool here a little bit earlier than usual because I want you to understand the anatomy here to explain why we see these different contours on the skin and why this happens. So the true shoulder joint is the glenohumeral joint. The gleno is the glenoid. That's going to be the socket or this part of the shoulder blade, sort of like the golf tee. And then the humeral is going to be the ball of the shoulder. That's going to be the humeral head or the arm bone right here. We describe shoulder dislocations in terms of where the ball of the humerus sits relative to that socket. The most common by far is an anterior, meaning front dislocation, where the ball of the shoulder is forward relative to the rest of the shoulder blade. So the arm kind of hangs down in front of the shoulder. This is the acromion right here. And so that's that upper bump, that kind of upper border that we see with that big defect right here, because now the ball of the shoulder is out forward. So there's all this empty space right there where it should be. And typically in mixed martial arts, this is happening because somebody's arm gets twisted behind their back in an awkward way that causes this force to be directed forward where the ball of the shoulder wants to pop anterior relative to the glenoid. But here with the punch that Dos Santos throws, it's going to basically simulate the same sort of thing. So as he extends that right arm out forward, it's causing the ball of the humerus to be pulled anterior and he just doesn't have the stabilizing capability to keep that ball in place and so the shoulder dislocates. And that's what makes this really unusual is the fact that just throwing a punch, there was enough instability in his shoulder that that caused a dislocation. As his arm is accelerating forward to throw this punch, the muscles stabilizing the shoulder are trying to fire to keep it in place because without any muscles, the ball of the shoulder would just continue on forward. And so it comes out because those muscles aren't able to adequately fire to keep the joint in a nice stable position. So now if we look back at those surface contours on Dos Santos' right shoulder, again, this little bump or kind of protrusion right there is going to be the tip of the shoulder blade. And then what we're seeing here kind of flattened across in the front of his shoulder is the ball of the arm bone that's displaced out of its socket anterior or forward relative to the rest of the joint. During the rest of the sequence, when the physician comes out to try and help get the shoulder back in place, I have to admit, this is something that can be pretty darn challenging because what happens is all of the muscles around the shoulder instantly start to spasm up really tight and can make it really, really challenging to get the shoulder joint back in a proper position. There's a lot of different techniques to help try. There's a lot of different techniques out there to reduce a shoulder. And oftentimes it's just whatever you prefer is your go-to before you kind of step to other techniques if you can't successfully get it reduced. I'm not exactly sure what technique they were going for here. The fact that they almost look to bring the arm up into a little bit of abduction makes me wonder about a technique called the milch method. You basically try to bring the arm up a little bit externally or rotate and then apply a little bit of traction to get it back in place. But what's really important is you have to oftentimes massage the muscles to try to get the muscles to relax. It looks like they weren't able to kind of in that position. So maybe trying some others here. And it's really hard because in these moments, the athlete is oftentimes fighting you. They're going to be in a lot of discomfort. It's not always as easy as it looks to just get the shoulder back into position, but you kind of just have to try multiple different techniques to see if you can get it adequately back in place. I like to use one called the Cunningham method where you sort of loop your arm around the dislocated limb, you use your other hand to sort of massage the shoulder muscles, and then you gradually have the athlete sit up straight. And as they sit up, you sort of pull down into some traction and then rotate the arm outwards to try to get it to go back into location. There's even some techniques to basically self reduce your shoulder where you essentially tape your hands together, put them across on your knee, and then just lean backwards and allow progressive time and weakening and fatigue of the muscles that are inhibiting the joint from going back in place 
to then allow it to basically snap back in. On the broadcast, you might've heard him talking about how the doctor should just call the fight right away after seeing the shoulders out. And I actually kind of disagree here. A lot of athletes will have recurrent shoulder dislocations. And unless there's some rule that once the shoulder's dislocated, they have to call the fight. If I can successfully get the shoulder reduced and the athlete has good range of motion, they've got good strength, and they can do what they need to do to fight, I'd probably let them go back out there and fight because there's no guarantee that you had a big bad injury. And a lot of people with chronic instability will just continuously dislocate their shoulder. So I think they made the right call here because obviously they couldn't get the shoulder back in place, but I don't instantly think dislocated shoulder fight has to end if you're able to successfully get it back really, really quickly. So a very common injury, but a very unusual way for the injury to occur. And I hope this was interesting to take a look at what exactly transpired here with Junior Dos Santos and his shoulder. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.